Hey guys, so this is going to be a video that I've been meaning to do for a while, but um, I just wanted to go ahead and get these, uh, get a couple of videos made about the new Pokemon games, Sun and Moon, that released uh, November 4th of this year, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, I have finally finished playing through them both, and um, seeing what's different, the Pokemon that are different, and I was, <clears throat> I was wanting to give you guys... Um, a review because a lot of you do know that I do enjoy Pokemon. I've been playing it pretty much the entire time that I've been alive. Um, and um, I remember my mom getting me uh, my first Pokemon game, which was Pokemon Blue. Um, and, you know, I've been playing it ever since. I was really excited for these new Pokemon games, but I was also extremely skeptical because these were the Pokemon games that were going to be taking the franchise that we have known and kind of understood how the games work. You start a journey, you get a starter, you kept get you get some badges, you meet a bad team, you flaunt their plan, you go to the Pokemon League and you're the champion. And this they announced, okay, no more gems, we're not doing that anymore. And I was skeptical, you know, because there is an old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And there's a lot of people who said, well, I'm so sick and tired of it's just get eight badges, get the champion, and, you know, that's it. And, well, you say you're sick of it, but yet every time a new game comes out, you buy it and you say how much you like it. So, <laughs> the to, you know, but I do applaud Nintendo for taking that chance because if the game had flopped it would have severely damaged them and then they would have had to probably rush another game and like to try and like please uh the people that they ticked off but they did do it and in this video i'm going to be giving you the good i'm going to give you the bad and then i'm going to tell you what i would like to see in the next pokemon game whether that be gen 8 whether like, this is sun and moon maybe the next one will be pokemon eclipse i don't know um so anyway, I have a list, and I'm going to be looking down here to make sure I <clears throat> get say everything that I wrote out here. So with the first, we're going to start with the good. You know, we're always going to always going to start with the the things that were good. And the first off is the it should be the pretty obvious one. All the new Pokemon. The new Pokemon is absolutely amazing. Um, some of them, you know, <laughs> I'd rather just forget about. But there are a lot of them that are really cool. Both the new region Pokemon and the new uh, takes on some of the originals, the Alolan Pokemon. The only thing I wish I could that I could say is all the Alolan Pokemon came from the Kanto region. I would like to see some other region Pokemon other than Kanto get an Alolan form. Um, maybe that's something that they're holding out. Maybe there's going to be another game for the Alolan region. Um, Eclipse was just an idea, guys, because Sun, Moon, well, what can you go after that? But Pokemon Earth. Um, but anyway, um, I will be interested to see if they do Alolan forms of other Pokemon outside the Kanto region. There, there are Alolan forms that I love, like Muk and Marowak and Raichu. And then there's ones like Exeggutor, which I'm sorry, I just... I, I just... I just can't get over so um you know but um the new pokemon awesome second is pokemon refresh this thing was it was a <laughs> this thing was actually really helpful because it, it got so old because you would have to buy all this medicine in the early game because you didn't have access to floral stores which also heals your hp while curing status conditions this allows you at no cost as far as money goes to get rid of any status condition, and that is extremely thankful, <laughs> grateful, because it gets annoying, how, especially if you're grinding or you're looking for something in the grass, a certain nature or something. It gets annoying if you have to keep running back and forth to um, get a poison or a paralysis off. And this, you can just pull out the Pokemon Refresh, rub them down with that little stick, and the paralysis or the poison or the burn goes away. And that's really, really nice. Um, plus, you can feed them and pet them and make them more affectionate, which will sometimes have them hold on from a shot that doesn't kill them or make them get a critical more or something like that or some kind of extra thing. That's cool. Um, and it's it's easy to do, that, which is really nice. <clears throat> so that is definitely something I loved. No more HMs. This is something 
when it was announced, it made a lot of people happy. Because every single time a game came out, you would find that one Pokemon who was the perfect HM slave. Two HM slaves that come to mind immediately are Gyarados, because I remember all the times I played through Soul Silver or any of those, he was my surfer, he was my rock smash, he was my strength, and then he was either my whirlpool and waterfall, or, you know, um, <clears throat> uh, Zigzagoon was another one. Um, but, you know, I'm glad they're gone. I'm glad you have the Tauros so you can get around fast. I, I didn't crash through boulders, so Rock Smash. They have the Charizard that you can fly on. The Lapras lets you surf, and the Sharpedo breaks rocks in the water. So that's really cool. I'm glad they did that. That was something that was... And, and riding the Pokemon, it... it it was a new, uh, it was a new thing for the game, and it was really, really cool. They brought back trainer customization. This was one of the things that I loved about X and Y, and that they took away in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, which I hated. I loved the Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. I loved the Hoenn remix because Hoenn region was, well, I don't know. Um, if I was gonna have to pick a favorite region now, it'd either have to be the Hoenn region or the Aloan region, but. Um, the Hoenn games before Aloha came out were by far easy, my favorite region. And I I expected a lot out of that. And I was hoping for the trainer customization to stay on because I liked how I could make my trainer look different from everyone else. Um, it felt like you were actually immersing yourself in the game and the Pokemon culture, if you, were, if you will. Um, so... I really, really liked that they brought that back, and, you know, that is something that I think they need to keep with, even if it takes an extra month or two of production to get that to be possible. I think it's in their best interest to do that. <clears throat> the next good is a good after game. You know, it's good to have something to kind of send the game off, because it... There are certain regions where after you beat the champion, if you've caught all the legendaries, there's just kind of nothing to do. This, you do that, but there's a story to it. You get to be the, come, become the first champion of the Alolan... Wow. Become the first champion of the Alolan region, and then you get to meet up with Looker, and you get to go after the UBs, and that's really cool because of the storyline that goes with it. So you feel like you're actually... There's a, a, a thing for it. It's not just, oh... You know, he's out there in some cave in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of a fog that is a pain in the ass to wind your way through, and it's really not worth it. I'm referencing Kyrim because that thing was terrible, and, the, and to get back there was a pain in the ass the first time I did it. And then when you finally catch Kyrim and realize, oh, this Pokemon sucks. So, I... I I, I'm glad they did that because, and I like also like what they did in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, how you had the Rayquaza storyline, and then you had you got to go after uh, <clears throat> Deoxys in space. I'm glad they did that, but this one felt a little bit longer. Um, that I really liked. Um, I hope that they continue to do that um, because I think that makes the game more enjoyable um, to where you actually have to spend a while playing it and you can't just power through the game in two, three days because that was the main complaint I had about X and Y. You could power through X and Y in two days easy. Um, so I'm glad that they did that. <clears throat> the last part on my good you get to start with some money. And what I mean by that, right before, I think it's right before you go to the Pokemon Trainer School and you leave your house, your mom comes out and says, oh, here's a little pocket money for you. And when she said a little pocket money, I thought, oh, she probably just gave you like a thousand Poke Dollars or something like that. She, you look in your wallet and she handed you 30 grand. And it's just like, you know what? I wish my mom came up to me and said, here's a little pocket money. And it was 30 grand. So that was, that was really nice um, because in the early game, it's really hard to get money now. I think also the developers realized um, that um, <clears throat> that money was going to really be needed in this one. So they gave you the Munchlax event that had the attack happy hour to double it. And then you find the amulet coin very early on in the game. So I think they did that to where they were, they were giving you the message. You might want to save your money. So it was really nice to uh, have that. And plus, 
they changed some of the items around, like Super Potion now gave you 60 HP, but Hyper Potion only gave you 120, and so you found yourself going through your, at least I did, you go through your potions a little bit faster, so you do need the money. So um, when you do, if you do get the chance to play one of these, um, <clears throat> go to... If you have internet at your house, then you're fine. Um, make sure you get your event Munchlax. I think he's available through January, the middle of January, if I remember correctly. Um, make sure you get your event Munchlax. Um, you really uh, make sure you find the amulet coin. I believe you find it on Pinola Ranch, if I'm remembering correctly. I think that's correct. Um, you know, make sure you get that. Also, you get a uh, pulverizing pancake. So. Um, make sure that you get your Munchlax. Even if, even though, even if you end up putting it in your PC later in the game, which I did my first time playthrough, because I've played through Sun once, I've played through Moon twice. Um, well, I'm in the process of playing through Moon the second time, but, um, <clears throat> it's, it's a good idea to have it early on so you can just stock up money, so you can buy the TMs you want, you can buy potions, you can buy clothes, and things like that. It's, uh, makes it a lot more fun if you have extra money that you can, you know, get things that are just to make, that, that are just, uh, things you're getting for fun, like the clothes. At least me, every single time there's a new clothes store, I always go in there and look. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, a little pocket money. Apparently a little pocket money in the Pokemon world is 30 grand. I wish someone would give me a little pocket money. I, I mean, God, 30 grand. I mean, that's pretty awesome. Okay, now we're getting into the bad. Number one, and this is a big one, the slow start this game has. Guys, I seriously, the first time I played through this, I played about four hours into it, you know, getting my starter, getting the nature I wanted, you know, and having to reset it all those times, uh, getting the first few Pokemon I wanted to start my journey with and things like that. I hated how you were so limited on that first island. My biggest pet peeve in gaming is when you limit my options. Now, but now, especially in a game that is known for not doing that, um, because this game, it feels like forever before you're even allowed to go to the Pokemon Center. Oh, nope, there's a Tauros there. We can't just walk around it. We have to actually wait for the Tauros to get completely off the screen. And that annoyed the hell out of me. To the point, guys, I came this close to shutting the game off and just being done. Because it's just like, I'm sorry, this is horrible. This is horrible. I hate it. I hate it. I, I hate how you are forcing me to do this. You know, I I mean, I want my time to explore and just mess around. And they didn't give you that. They From the very part of the early game, they hold your hand and force you to go the way they want you to do. And I don't like that. I just, no. Um... That was very, very bad. Now, even to this, since I'm now playing through Moon the second time, because I played Moon first, played Sun, and now I'm playing through Moon again. And even after playing the game, starting through the game two more times, I just, that early stage of the game, I find myself literally sitting there holding my DS going, <sighs> Yes, 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 yes. And I, I just don't like that. The story starts so slow. You got to go through a lot of talking. And it's just... I just wish that the game didn't start off so freaking slow and so freaking preachy. Um, you know, I get it that, it ha that it's Pokemon, but I just wish the game didn't start so slow. And now... The second bad thing on this list, and the biggest bad on this game, is the characters. I absolutely hate the characters. How? I think that's how you say his name. The guy who follows you around who wants those malasadas or whatever. I can't stand this fucking kid. His jumping that he does, where he jumps, goes up like this, and then jumps like this, like he's a retarded Ryu doing sure you can. I, I, I wish I could reach into the game and strangle him and then throw him in the water and just watch him sink to the bottom. I'm not close to kidding. I hate his, 
I hate everything about him. I hate his jumping. I hate how he never takes anything serious in the game. He's He always thinks that you just think he's the greatest thing ever and that you want to be his friend. And I just, every single time that you're in the middle of something and he comes out, I just go, oh my God, how go away. Nobody likes you. Have you ever watched How I Met Your Mother? And there was that, I, wow, I just drew a total blank. Uh I can't remember the name of the girl who always yells, Shut up, Patrice! That that girl. I, and I've watched that show so much. I am disgusted at myself. But, uh... The girl from Canada. I, I, I Seriously, I cannot remember. God. But that's how I feel about Hal. Every single time he starts talking, it's like, Shut up, Hal! No one likes you! That's why your grandfather sent you on this journey. He didn't want to be around you. I, I can't stand how I, I, I wish that like when the professor introduces you to him, he say, would you like to be friends with this? And you can give him a hell no. Stay away from me. I, I, I don't. And how he always wants to go with you. And it just I just I, I, I hate how please say there's one person out there besides me that hates how? I'm sorry. I miss the days in Pokemon when your rival was your real rival. He wasn't a complete idiot. He or she even, because um, we saw this in X and Y, or all the rivals were just worthless. The dancer in X and Y, he was annoying. You had the smart guy who who wanted to... He was basically Max from the anime. Um... And then you had the girl who just whined and cried in X and Y that followed you everywhere. I mean, I I miss the days when your rival was a good character. You had Blue or Silver, you know, or, um, you know, I liked that. Now, you did kind of get that with Gladian. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Another thing I, a thing I wish they'd add is... I think voiceover would actually be really cool in these games, just for the simple fact so we know how to know how to pronounce Pokemon names and character names. But that is probably never going to ever happen. But I I loved Gladian. He felt like a true rival. How, on the other hand, just felt like a nuisance. Now let's talk about Lily. This is probably the most pathetic character. I along with How, these two together make the worst characters ever in Pokemon. You entrust, arguably, one of the rarest Pokemon in the world to this girl who can't find a hotel in the middle of a city where every house or building is this big and the hotel is the size of Soldier Stadium. You, you, you can't find a hotel amongst a, a bunch of little shops and houses and a Pokemon Center, and that's all that's there. The Pokemon Center, a little group of houses and stores, and a big-ass fucking hotel. And you can't find the hotel. And she doesn't keep Cosmog in a Pokeball. She insists that she shoves this thing in the smallest bag known to mankind, and that's it. Well, I'm sorry, I can't necessarily say I blame Cosmog for wanting to get out. Would you want to be shoved in a bag all day long with a girl who can't find her way around anywhere, who's a wimp? And then at the end of the game, she decides, I'm going to go to the Kano region, and it's, I, I want to go, what, what, what? You, you, you... Are you sure that boat leads to Kanto and not to the loony bin? You know, it just... I, I, her and Hal, I despise. I hate. <laughs> I, I absolutely hate those two characters. The Professor. I like the Professor. The Professor was nice. He seemed more of a laid-back, surfer kind of guy. That was a nice change-up. Um, Team Skull kind of got annoying. I mean, I think this was Japan's way of mocking white guys who act black in America. That's what the, that's the kind of vibe I was getting. Um, that they were funny at times and other times they were just, it, it was just like, okay, you're using language. That's you're trying to create the new hip language and it's not even closely working. So just stop. Um, the Aether foundation. I am, I'm surprised, <laughs> you know, I, I knew from the start there was something about that foundation that we didn't know about, but I did not expect that the woman behind the foundation to be such a cunt. The, the, 
every time that she lays into Lily about how Lily is, I'm like, that's your daughter. I don't blame you because your daughter is a stupid bitch, but that's your daughter. <laughs> you know, that was, I was very, um, I was very shocked. She was extremely cold. I will admit, Lily, she is a lot more devoted to that per to her mother than probably anybody on this planet because if I don't know if I could deal with actually anybody that I loved telling me that she wished I wasn't born and I was just kind of pathetic and she lost interest in me really early on and I was just kind of there I don't think I could just brush that off just because they were having a power trip but um, and then Gladian. I loved Gladian. I mean, Gladian felt like a legit character because halfway through the game, he feels like he's lost. He does not really sure what he wants. And then he acts all mean at one point. And then all of a sudden, he's just on your side. And I like him. His character felt legit. But Hal and Lily, I just can't stand. And, you know, I got the feeling that Hal was like somehow really into Lily. Um,. And Lily was somehow really into you or your character. Um, that probably come out really. That probably look really weird if you played through the game as a girl. But it's just like I. Not that I have a problem with that, but Lily just. It just seemed like she. If you play as a boy character, it comes off that. I. I. I well, I. Let me rephrase that. If you play, Lily just seems like what whether the main character would be a boy or a girl. It seems like she, at times, is just trying to almost come on to the main character, and that's just kind of creepy. Um, but how, if you want her, take her. <laughs> but I, I hate, I hate the rival, and I hate Lily. Those two characters I can't stand. The Professor was cool, Gladian was cool, Team Skull was okay, the Aether Foundation was a nice, um, um, you know thing behind the curtain kind of thing. Um, all of the captains and kahunas were really cool. They all had their own theme. And, you know, the, the the fire guy had red hair. The ghost girl looked like she was wearing something that was raggedy like a ghost. And that was really cool. They stuck with that theme. And that was really cool. Um, but how and Lily <laughs> kill them with fire. Number three, I wish the trials were longer and more challenging because they said these trials were going to be challenging. And there's the Christmas clock again, so you're just going to have to listen to me talk over it. I don't know what song that is. But the trials, they just, they were so easy if you really just paid attention. Um, you know, like the first one you do where you go in that cave, you just got to chase the ratatats and beat them. And then the second one, I don't, it, I mean, the one where you have to mix the sat, the, 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 the meal, and then the foment, not the fomantis, but fomantis' second form comes after you. Um, the one with the marowax, I mean, the trials just, they were easy. I, I mean, I wish that at least every trial you got to fight against each of them because there's some of them that you didn't get to fight. I wish you got to at least fight all of the captains and all the kahunas as well. That would have been nice, but I just wish some of the trials were a little bit harder. Um, or maybe not hard, maybe just a little bit longer and a little bit more... There was more objectives besides just chasing a ratatat or finding ingredients for something or taking some pictures of a Pokemon in a supermarket. I wish there was... There was a longer, uh, like, maybe seven things that you had to do. Um, <clears throat> but that's just me being nitpicky. I wish they were longer. Um, but I realized they also got to keep this short enough to where the younger players of the, game, of the franchise can still enjoy them. But I personally wish the trials were longer and maybe even a little harder. <clears throat> so... Um, the fourth thing, I wish, I don't remember what they were called, but in X and Y, they had this one place that you could go, and you could pay a fee, and you sat down, and you ate, but what you did is you battled three or four people, and then, depending on how you did, you got an item, and then it was an item that was worth something, and then you could take that item and go sell it to a Pokemart, 
so you could go back and do it again. I like that because it was a nice way to grind, um, and you got more experience faster for doing it, and it was a double battle, so you could power up two Pokemon at the same time while your XP share was giving power to all your other Pokemon. I like that. I wish those would have been in here, I, and if they were, I completely missed them, but those were really nice. Um, I would, it would have been nice if those were in there and they were easier to find if they are in there. And if they are in there, I'm going to feel like an idiot. Um, the next bad thing is finding certain wild Pokemon is a pain. The first playthrough, when I was trying to find a Pichu, I spent three hours looking for a Pichu. Three hours. But when I caught my Pichu, finally... It was like all the Pichus just hopped across the Pichu border, and there was Pichu everywhere. It was like, you catch one, and then they're all over the place. And that is extremely annoying. Now, it was nice when then all of a sudden you're catching them, and you're like, no, 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 I'm looking for this nature. But the first time that you actually find them... It seemed like it took forever, and it wasn't just Pichu. Um, Mimikyu was another one that took me forever to find. Um, female Salandit is a bitch to find. Forget trying to find a good nature one, but trying to find female Salandit is a bitch. Um, but I wish they would have made it a little more easy to encounter certain Pokemon um, and not make it a three-hour-long endeavor. But when you finally do get them, you feel like you accomplished something. So maybe, I don't know. And the last thing on my bad is there are long cutscenes in this game where you don't get a break. And the biggest one that comes to mind is the after you beat the professor in the Pokemon League, who turns out to be the, the champion or the stand-in that you have to beat to become the first champion, you go through this long credit scene, then you go through this walkthrough with Lily as she drones on and takes you to Tapa Coco, and then you gotta battle him, and then there's another five-minute cutscene, and then there's more credits, and it's just like, oh my god, Lily, go away. I don't care that you're going away from the island. I actually am thankful. Now, can we just put Hal on that boat with you? Um... You know, and just long talking scenes at times. And it, it's just like, I think they tried to get you so immersed into the story at times that it almost comes across annoying. I mean, I think they I think they were really wanting you to get involved in the story so you weren't thinking it, in case they, came, they caught one of those people who were just completely against um, the change up of the storyline and trying to completely immerse them in the storyline to forget about that. Now, don't get me wrong. When they said that there was going to be no more Pokemon gems, I was skeptical, but I was excited to see what they were going to do. Even though I was skeptical, I, I mean, I was kind of like on the fence. I'm like, I don't know what you're going to come up with, but I'm going to at least give you a chance here because I do love the franchise and I am you know, I do trust you. So they they did a great job. You know, so I'm very I'm very happy that they did because I really would not want to. Do, I I don't think the world would be ready for the backlash if they did. But um, I wish the, there was there were certain cutscenes in the game that just went on forever. It's just like I want to go to the Pokemon Center. I would like oh, and here's the bitch. If you knock Tapa Coco out, at least I. I can't confirm this because I haven't tested it yet. Um, the first time that happened and I fought Tapa Coco, I was like, wait a minute, what if I knock him out? Does that mean I gotta fight the, the professor again and listen to all this shit again? That That is the number one thing that pisses me off. So, um, I really, really, really wish they would have cut down on some of those cutscenes. Now, here's a couple of things that I would like to see in future games. One, I want a longer story. No matter how long they make the story, I'm always going to say that. I want the game to be longer. I want it to be more in-depth. I want a longer story. I'm going to say that about every Pokemon game, no matter what. Number two, I want another two-region game. Soul Silver and Heart Gold are two of the best games to play, or Silver and Gold, or Crystal, because the game is long. You go through two regions, you meet two sets of gym leaders. The only thing that I wish they would have done also in Soul Silver and Heart Gold and Silver Gold and Crystal, I wish that you also went through the Kanto 
Pokemon League, which I realize would have been weird because Bruno is in both of those Pokemon Leagues, but you can just easily replace Bruno in one of them and I real and get a different person to replace Lance. So I wish that would have been in there too, but that was that is obviously foregone because that game is how many years old. I want another two region game. And I'm at the point where I really don't care what two you pick. Um, <clears throat> I was kind of hopeful at the start of this that Aloha would take you back to Kalos or maybe back to Kanto or anywhere. Um, now, I will say that there is a lot of. Uh, References to the Sinnoh region in this game. You meet Cynthia. It talks about Palkia and Dialga and uh, Giratina in some books in that research facility. Um, there is just a lot of references to Sinnoh. So that makes me wonder, is that their way of saying next on the on like the Pokemon list, you know, like if you were to walk into their drawing board room, it goes Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, then Gen 7, and then after that, Sinnoh remakes. I don't know how the world's going to feel about that if that's the case, because it seems like the pe every Pokemon player, their least favorite region is either the Sinnoh region or the Unova region. Now, me personally, I like the Sinnoh region because it, give, it gave me my favorite Pokemon, but... Um, I'm hopeful that um, if they do decide to do Sinnoh remakes, they will take some of the factors of this game and put it into that. Now, if they really wanted to do it right, my idea is this: to take my second point of what I would what I want for future games to have a two-region game, take the Sinnoh game, remake it, do the same storyline, even go through the same story like you did in the Sinnoh region. You get your eight badges, and you win the Sinnoh League, and all this and that, and then say Cynthia gives you a pass to go to the Aloha region. That would be really cool. Um, that would be nice. That would be an idea right there, Pokemon people. Um, to, how would how would you let me know in the comment section? How would you like a, like that a, a Sinnoh remake where at the end of the game you went back to the Aloha region and you got to. Um, see what's um, going on. Or what about a game where you start in Aloha and it there's a way to like forward your Pokemon onto the game and then you s travel to the center region. What about that? You know, like a, like a, like a like a chapter two or something like that. Well, no, honestly, I think I'd rather you start in Sinnoh and then go to Aloha. Um, but let me know what you think. I mean, what would you think about that? Them taking the Sinnoh remakes that I think they're blatantly saying they want to do with all the references they make to the Sinnoh region in these games. How would you like it if they took the Sinnoh region and combined it with the Aloha region and kind of made a a uh, a hybrid. I think that'd be really cool as long as you keep what made the Alola games good. No HMs, trainer customization, all that. <clears throat> I think that would be a really good way to take uh, the Sinnoh region, Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum and make them amazing. So there's something to think about. <clears throat> Um, just a few more things I want to mention. I want a difficulty setting, because the one thing that irritates me about this game is there are so many times that if you just grind a little bit, and you know your way around typings, and you know basic strategy as far as, like, competitive strategy goes, you can speed through the game. I would like a difficulty setting. Like, when you start the game, you want to play it on easy, medium, hard, or master. That would be really cool. That'd be an idea. Um, I would like the ability to skip all the tutorials. <laughs> How to catch a Pokemon. I am sorry. I would like an option. If the professor would just say, hey, would you like me to teach you how to catch a Pokemon? That way, if for the new players, it can be shown how to catch a Pokemon. But if you're like me and you've played Pokemon for all, uh, at over 15 years, you can just say, no, I've been catching Pokemon since I was seven. I'll be okay. Um, and then finally, I, every new game... I will always say this as well, along with longer story. I want a new feature or a new idea. This one brought us Z-moves. It brought us Alolan Pokemon. It brought us where you became the first champion of the Aloha region. And then if you play through the Pokemon League again, the person you fight last, there is like 
a lot of different possibilities that you can get. I like that. That is really cool. So if they do do a Sinnoh remake, I want them to come up with a new spin for the Sinnoh region um, while keeping everything that made the Aloan region games good. So anyway, guys, that is my review of Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon. Which one was your favorite? Are you Team Sun or are you Team Moon? Personally, I'm Team Moon. I love Lunala. Um, but anyway, I, I do love both of these games. I will admit I was extremely skeptical about these games and the very slow start, like I mentioned in the bad part, <clears throat> really had me so close to giving up, but I'm so glad I'm not. I can say with all certainty, these are two of the best Pokemon games I've ever played and I absolutely love it. Um, I can, I can now say with certainty that this is tied for my favorite region in Pokemon. So anyway, guys, what was your thoughts about Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon? What did you like? What didn't you like? What do you want to see in the future? And what do you think about the Sinnoh remake? Do you think they're real? Do you think that they're going to happen? Do you think <clears throat> that uh, a Sinnoh remake with the Alolan region tied into it would be a cool idea. Give me your ideas. I always like hearing what you guys think. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, thumbs this video up, share it with your friends, and I'll see you later.